Okay, this is the M1 paper from June 2021. This is question number three, which if we have a quick look at it is a forces question, but we can see it's forces and vectors. Uh, there's some work on equilibrium. They're giving me a mass at some stage, so I'll probably have F equals MA. And for the last part, probably some sort of equation I've got to solve to be able to work out what lambda is. But let's actually make a start on it and see what we're doing. So it says we've got these three forces, F1, F2, and F3. They act on a particle of mass four kilograms. So as I say, that'll be F equals MA later. But the key to start off with is that it rests in equilibrium. So if it rests in equilibrium, then I should be able to work out what F3 is here, even though it's AI plus BJ. And once I've got that, it's asking me to work out an angle between A and, sorry, between F3 and minus J. Yeah, that's okay, we can do that. We just need to draw out a diagram, um, a quick sketch of that. But let's get going then. So part A, we know that to start off, they're in equilibrium. So if in equilibrium, just telling the examiner that I know what's going on, if in equilibrium, then F1 plus F2 plus F3 must work out to be equal to zero. Well, we know those three forces. I've got 5i plus 2j. I've got minus 3i plus j. And I've got ai plus bj. All that equals to naught. Well, if I look just at the, a, at the i, sorry, then, I've got 2 plus a lots of i. And if I look at the j's, I've got... Uh, what have I got? 2, 3, 3 plus B, J there. So just combining everything together. Now we know that this is uh, 0, so that means that 2 plus A must be equal to 0. So in other words, A is minus 2, and 3 plus B must be equal to 0, so B equals minus 3. So what that means is that F3, which is AI plus BJ, is minus 2i minus 3j. Now what they actually said for this first part is can I find the angle between f3 and minus j? Yes I can, I'm just going to draw a quick diagram out. Always draw a diagram for the angle one just to make sure which quadrant everything's in and which angle we're looking at here. So minus 2i minus 3j is going to be down there, so it actually be more like that, wouldn't it? If it's minus 2i and minus 3j. That doesn't need to be 100% accurate, but you may as well sort of try and do it to scale. And the angle minus j, I need to just change that there. Sorry, not the angle, the vector minus j would be going there. So the angle that we actually want is going to be this angle theta here, but what I can find quite quickly is the angle alpha there and then work out theta from that. So if I'm working out alpha, I can say tan alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent is equal to three over two. So that means that alpha works out to be 56.3 degrees, which means in this case theta, or uh, let's say this, angle required which equals theta equals 90 minus 56.3 so works out to be equal to 33.7 degrees make it clear that's my answer there and just go back it doesn't say anything about decimal places or significant figures i was just checking to see um, whether it said anything like that but it doesn't Right, so for part B, it says the force, oops, me, the force F3 is now removed and replaced by F4, where F4 is this one. Okay, so the resultant's going to be F1 plus F2 plus F4. Um, when the three forces F1 and F, F2 and F4 act, there's an acceleration. And because I know F equals MA and I've got this mass from up here, I already know what I'm going to do as my game plan now. So let's just explain it to you, then I'll explain it to the examiner. What I'm going to do 
is I'll be able to work out the resultant as being F1 plus F2 plus F4, and that'll give me something, but lambda will be in there. But then I'll know F equals MA, and um, using that, I'll be able to work out what F is going to be. And then from that, what I'll know when I do F equals MA is that's the magnitude of the force. So because I'll have F as a... Um, a version in terms of lambda, I'll be able to work out the magnitude equals the magnitude. Okay, I understand. I mean, you might not, but you will do now when I actually go through and start doing it all. So as I said, the resultant, the new resultant is going to be F1 plus F2 plus F4, which is going to be, just be careful, make sure you're using the right ones each time, 5i and 2j, minus 3i and j, and then this business lambda i plus 3j. Now, just like we did last time, we're gonna need this in terms of just i's and j's, so two plus lambda i, and three plus three lambda j. So that's my resultant force, but now because I know f equals ma, I can say that f is equal to four, multiplied by 3.25. So I know that F is going to be equal to 13. Now that's the magnitude of the force. If I want to be strictly accurate, that's going to be the magnitude of that. But that means that that's the magnitude of that one. So what I'll now be able to do is to say if that's true, then the magnitude of um, this one here is given by 2 plus lambda squared, 3 plus 3 lambda squared, well, that will be equal to 13 squared, won't it? The magnitude of one must be equal to the magnitude of the other. And now, great, I've just got some quadratic that I've got to go ahead and solve. Um, you can take your time over this. You can do 2 plus lambda times 2 plus lambda if you want as brackets. Just make sure you know how to do this quickly and efficiently. I can do that in my head, a plus b all squared, and I can do the same for the next one. I'm gonna have nine, I'm gonna have nine at 18 lambda, and then I'm gonna have nine lambda squared is equal to 169. But if you need to take a little bit more time to do both of those, then, then take a little bit more time. With all of this um, AS level work and A level work, final answers being accurate really is where we get our marks, okay? We don't wanna lose method, um, there's not many, there's not millions of method marks being available, is what I'm trying to say. Struggling over my words. So tidying this up, I'm going to get 10 lambda squared plus 22 lambda, and taking the, 150, uh, the 169 over gives me minus 156 equals naught. Standard practice to do something like this, let's just divide everything by two. Okay, they do it all the time. And if they do have this situation, then I'm absolutely thinking that this probably will factorize. Okay, if you're not sure how to factorize quadratics, you need to go away and look at another one of my videos on factorizing quadratics. But really at this stage, I'd hope you're fairly good at this sort of thing. I know some of you sort of rely on using calculator methods and everything else like that. Just get good at it, guys. Just just take your time, go away and practice it. It's an IGCSE um, technique. I know this isn't a particularly nice one in order to work out that. What you could do, stick into the formula, get the answers, and then go back and write down that you pretended that you factorized. Either way, we're gonna get um, five lambda equals minus 26, which gives me lambda equals minus 26 over five. Or we're gonna get lambda minus three equals naught, which gives me lambda equals three. Let's just go back and check here. Lambda's gonna have to be a positive there. Okay, so that's not a solution. Always just check for Little bits like this, we don't want to lose a final mark. Lambda has to be equal to a positive there. So lambda is going to be equal to three. And that then is the solution of that equation, of, of that question. Hopefully that makes sense.